Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at Devontae Walker, wide receiver, picked in the fourth round by the Baltimore Ravens. And we're going to take a look at a few plays that shows how he can help the Baltimore Ravens offense. Now, a lot of people, you know, label Tez as a one-trick pony. And, you know, I think at this point in his career, he kind of is a one-trick pony, but he's very good at that one trick. And that one trick really will help expand the Baltimore Ravens offense and kind of open up the offense. But before we get into that, let's kind of give a little background on, on Devontae's and what he's been through and his, you know, little storyline or whatever. So we started out at Kent State, played two years at Kent State. His head coach at Kent State was the offensive coordinator this past year at uh, Colorado before um, he was let go and who's now the head coach at San Diego State. So he played for that guy. Um, transferred, left there, um, had issues, went to another school, and this is where the, the trouble came in. That didn't play at that school and then had issues with the NCAA as far as his eligibility at North Carolina. Uh, actually started and got on the field at North Carolina in week six. And so he played from week six into week 13, and that's where his production came in. And as far as his production at North Carolina, he had 66 targets, 41 catches, 699 yards, uh, 17 yards per catch, seven touchdowns. Uh, as far as his um, drops, he had three drops in those 66 targets. Uh, his drop percentage is 6.8. He had 10 of 17 contested catches. So his contested catch rate is, let me pull that up, 58.8. Um, and that's pretty good. 6-2, uh, a little right around 200, 200 yards. And again, he was drafted in the fourth round um, for us. He was our first pick in the fourth round. And so what we're going to get from Tez is a guy that can pretty much take the top off the defense. And, you know, don't expect him to come in and run these nuanced routes and, and do all these different things. But because he's so good and so fast at what he does, he just do what you do. And then you can grow your route tree. You can grow your route running and you can get better at the things you're not good at. Now I say not good at, but he wasn't asked to be good at these other things. So I don't know if he can't do that yet. So even though I say he's not a nuanced route runner, I don't know if he's not that. But because he's so fast, it gives him grace because, well, we'll just get to it when we get to the film, and I'll give you that part of it. So let's get into the film part of Devontae Walker. And I only got six plays, so I'm not going to keep you long. So let's get started. All right, welcome back to the channel. If you have not, Subscribe, please hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. So let's get into this um Tez Walker video and shout out to the Patreons too. I appreciate everything that you do and uh keep supporting the channel. And if you would like to be a Patreon, go to patreon.com backslash sip the tally and join. We got four tiers over there, and uh you can join and see all the different perks that we got going on. Let's get started. So we all know uh Tez is a speed merchant. So we're going to show you, you know, what he does with his speed. Just in this clip right here, you see the guy is what? You see him at the top of your screen with the arrow. He's about seven or eight yards off already. Tez is going to close that cushion. And all we all know, once the receiver gets even, he leaves. And again, right here, Drake Drake May doesn't have a lot of room to, to throw it. I would like to see Tez stack, stack the DB on this, but he doesn't. He just runs right by him. I would love to see uh, Ted stack, but he don't, and goes up and makes, makes a good catch. But again, he starts off with about, said about seven yards of cushion, maybe eight, seven, eight yards of cushion, and still gets on top of the DB real quick and just run right by. Like he's the number one read already from the jump. As soon as Drake catches the ball, he's looking at Ted's. I'm going over top, I ain't changing nothing. Ted run, runs by the guy. Ball's a little bit underthrown. He still goes up and gets it. Gets the foot in, you know, over the top. So that part of his game, we know he has. Even more so. You try to press him. Like, he don't, he don't um, I don't think he catches this one, but still, we just see the, the see him being able to get over the top of people. Get a little inside stem. And this time, it's not just a nine ball. A little inside stem on the guy. 
And now he's even already on him and he's about to run by. Him. Like this guy's pulling on his um his jersey because he already beat him. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Like you see the pull on the jersey right there? He's already won at the line of scrimmage. So the ability for him to win at the line of scrimmage, we already see that. He's just running away from it. And again, this ball is on the throne also. And he's just running away from this guy. But ball's on the throne, you know. Should have came down, came down with just one of those contested catches that he did not get. But what I like about it is just winning at the line of scrimmage. Gave him a little outside move right here. I got the DB to jump outside, stuck him inside, use his hands or use his arm to kind of get that little press off. Right now, the DB knows he's defeated, tries to pull him back to him with the uh, tug of the jersey and just turns the speed on. Ball's on the throne. You know, should have made the catch. Got two hands on it. You know, it looked like he got P.I. thrown on it. Looked like he got a flag on it. Yeah, the ref did throw a flag. Okay, so even though he didn't come down, we got a flag call. So it is what it is. But you get the point I'm trying to make. Got another little press situation right here. And this time he just run past this guy. And he makes the contested catch on this one. But again, just, just running past people. We, you know, I talked about earlier in the, in the little monologue. One trick pony. He's just straight running past this guy. And again, it's not a great throw. Could have been led more, but he goes up and make the contested catch. Makes the contested catch versus a guy. Gets both feet down. One, two, gets both feet down. One, two. And you know, even though it's college, we'll take that. We'll take that. We'll take that. Because you got to do it in the NFL. So you're just practicing on it, working on it. Now, what that does. Because we, we, you know he can get over top of you. So what that does is, this is the residual of that. Look at that cushion. Look at that cushion. Now, so if he's not a nuanced route runner, because he has so much cushion, now he can he can be able to get this, get this type of stuff. So now he's going to catch this little dig route, which is nothing crazy because it's on. He just caught a little dig route right over the middle. And look at all this room he has to run. Now, once he gets gets the ball in his hand, is he gonna make is he gonna make a bunch of guys miss? Probably not necessarily, but with all this space, he can just outrun people. He gets the ball like this with all this space, he can maybe turn this into a. He can outrun people like that if they don't close in right, if they choose to, if they pick the wrong angle or something like that, like he did versus Miami. Ooh, that hurt to say. Golly, that really hurt for me to say. <laughs> but that you get where I'm going. And he did it versus Miami. He scored three touchdowns versus Miami. He he torched Miami. Man, it hurt rolling off my tongue. And see, look at the cushion on this one. Because they know, you know, hey, he can run past me. Like number look at number nine. Number nine trying to get out of there. He just take a little slant. Nothing crazy about this, this slant route. Nothing eye popping. But because of the cushion. It's easy catch. That's a what? A 12, 15 yard game, maybe? 10 yards right there. It's a 15 yard game because they're scared to get beat over the top. Just because he's fast. So he, because he's so fast, they give him so much cushion, he can afford to not necessarily be a great route runner to start his career. Because you don't, the DB's worst thing is getting beat deep. Now, We've used them outside, used them outside, used them outside. Slide them in the slot. Slide them in the slot and let them split your safeties like this. This is where he can blow the top off. Slide them in the slot, let them split the safeties. And if you don't cover it right, you get a home run ball like this. You get a home run ball like that. Then, when you do get two safety looks, and these two safeties on the snap of the ball, they doing that. You can run him right down the middle and you get a touchdown like you're going to get on this or you get your run game going up in here because now you got numbers. Now you got numbers. But then you think about it. Let me just give you a personnel look. You got Tez right there. 
You know, this is this is one of the guys that played for me. This is Morales. But you get Tez right there. You get Mark Andrews here. You get maybe Bateman here. You got Zay here. And then you motion your running back in, you know, whoever your running back decides to be at this time, maybe Derrick Henry or whatever. That's a deadly combination. That's a deadly combination. If they in too high, you run whatever you want to run with 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 Lamar and and um Derrick Henry. They come down to do one high stuff, then you got to, you, your numbers in the passing game. That's how you play your numbers game. And with with Tez out there, you can you can take the top off the the defense and do whatever you want to do, you know, passing game wise. You just got to have the, the best matchups. It is what it is. And I just, I pick these dip, these individual names, but you can mix and match however you want to. You could just have different come. I didn't even mention likely. One of them person, one of those persons could be likely. Just with however you want to mix and match it. Like you can stay in the empty. You don't even have to have a running back in there and let one of them guys be likely. It's whatever you choose to do because you got a runner in Lamar. It's, it's whatever you want to do with your personnel. Like Munkin has a plethora of, of possibilities that he can go with. But with Tez in there, you got a legit deep threat to make guys turn and burn and get, get up out of there. You got to. So this is I just wanted to show you how Tez can affect the offense, how he can really open that thing up, and, and we can really have an even more explosive offense with a guy that can really just burn. Because even though Zay's quick, he's not – a like a burner burner zay's more quick than fast like zay can fake you out and juke you and he can get deep but tez got long speed like like tez can get on top of you and like just just go and you know my football enthusiasts know what i mean when i say he's more quick than fast and there's very few people that are fast and quick very few like the cheetah is fast and quick there's very few out there that's, that's fast and quick so this is what I got for you on Tez. Like I said, I wasn't going to keep you long. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Uh, again, if you are not subscribed, please consider doing so. Uh, hit the like button. Comment uh, your thoughts on Tez Walker and where he was picked and how you think he can contribute to the offense. Uh, hit the like button. Share it. Grab a link to this. Share it out. We're trying to get to 10K, and I appreciate you guys, and I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love.